Have you ever played Minecraft and thought to yourself, Ah, birds are singing, flowers are blooming, the sun is shining, and the cows are mooing. Ever since Diffy got locked up in an insane asylum, this game has been so peaceful and relaxing. No one's burning down the forests, releasing millions of tons of pollution into the atmosphere. No one's bombing innocent villages and taking the inhabitants as slaves. Now that Diffy's locked up, have we finally achieved what one would call peace? Welcome back to the dungeon, idiots. Now, first of all, let me clarify a few things. Some people believe that they're safe now that I'm locked up in solitary confinement. They think I'm permanently stuck here. No, 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 no. This is actually a common misconception. What, you think I'm not gonna escape just because the walls are made of bedrock? SMH, bro really thinks he can lock me up. Over the course of the past two videos, we've gone from scraping dirt dust off the walls, to using auto clickers that scrape the walls for us, to somehow using the dirt to build mechanized machinery and generating electricity, to building the pressure poop injector, all while rapidly expanding our basement and getting larger and larger rooms. And I've done all of this with the one goal in mind. To escape. Now prepare your ankles, because today's the day it's finally happening. I believe. Now the first thing I did was bomb some hop graphite and craft these miniaturization field projectors, which should help me craft stuff easier and using less materials. Now just like with basically all other machines, I spent like 30 minutes trying to figure out where to place them and how to actually get them to do anything. Now it turns out you have to place them specifically in a large compact machine and in these exact spots and one block off the ground for some reason. And they really just couldn't mention this in the quest book, could they? Yay. Now we have whatever this is. Oh, we can use the projectors to make ender pearls, each of which requires 26 obsidian. Why? Back to jumping on the squeezer. I'm having fun. Quality gameplay. Now we can finally make one ender pearl. I think you just throw a piece of redstone. Oh. I don't know what's going on, but I think it will give me an ender pearl. You know, the guards of this prison or insane asylum or whatever I'm locked up in just look at the cameras and see me doing this in my cell. Yeah, we just casually scrape enough dust off the walls to build whatever this is. Oh god. Are we going to need another four large compact machines to build a slightly larger compact machine? Oh, even better. We need six of them! And they need to be glitched ones, so we need to inject each of them with 32 liters of sewage using the pressure poop injector. So it does actually have a use. You know what? Nah, I don't really feel like doing this. Let's instead build a fusion reactor. That doesn't sound painful at all. I spent like an hour making tough alloy and all the other resources needed to make the fusion reactor and its coils, when I realized that I also need calcium sulfate. And unlike all the other resources I used, the only way to make calcium sulfate is through chemical reactions. Now, keeping myself from creating methamphetamine really proved to be a challenge, but in the end, after like an hour, I successfully created calcium sulfate, and now we can make the fusion core. Now we just need 64 fusion electromagnets. Uh-oh. I made tons of tough alloy, which is a material we need for the electromagnets, and turned them into platings, and now we can make 64 fusion electromagnets. Yay! Now with the projectors I made earlier, we now have a cheaper way of making normal compact machines. All we need is some compact machine walls and a block of gold. The problem is that we need ender pearls to actually initiate the crafting process. And these pearls take like 43 quarter vegetillion obsidian to make. So I made this automatic obsidian generator, but it's extremely slow, mostly because the lava generator I used takes like 30 years to smelt one singular cobblestone. I made four normal compact machines, melted them, and made another large compact machine, which we'll use to house the fusion reactor. Okay, I'm gonna look up some video on how to actually build it, because I have no idea how to do that. You know, I watched an episode of some guy's let's play of this mod pack, and I can't help but notice that this guy has all of this, like, advanced machinery and some extensive storage system, and he has pretty much everything automated and has tons of resources resources. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here with like six chests and pretty much nothing automated. <laughs> Am I doing something wrong? Like, was I supposed to automate all that stuff that I did manually? Nah, I prefer manual labor. Besides, automating stuff would involve me actually having to use my brain cells. Unacceptable. All right, I'm pretty sure it's done now. Am I supposed to turn this on somehow? Nah, this seems too complicated. I don't feel like doing any of this. All right, you know what? I'm just gonna pretend this doesn't exist and go back to making more compact machines. Let's make a giant compact machine. Let's craft some of these. Okay, I made a few constant and pickaxes and tough alloy pickaxes. 
Some of you pointed out that I should probably use these instead of the garbage steel and stone ones, since these actually exclusively give me precisely the resources I need, instead of giving me a bunch of random stuff. You know, I, pro I probably could have saved several hours had I done this earlier. And we're back to AFKing. Quality gameplay. Alright, we have like... 700 compact machine walls now. I'm probably gonna need a better power source than what I have right now. Now I don't know how the fusion reactor works, and I don't feel like checking, it looks too complicated. So let's instead make a fission reactor. I'm just gonna copy what someone else did, like block for block. 120 RF per tick. Now we need way more per tick, this isn't enough. Let's place that there. No, I don't want your stupid empty cooler. So if I turn this on, hey, yo, this is gonna generate power. Let's go. Almost 2000 RF per tick. I mean, that's an upgrade from like the 180 that we had before. We've somehow scraped enough materials off of the walls to craft a fission reactor. Mm-hmm. I mean, SMH, like if you're ever stuck in a basement, just do this in real life. Like, stop complaining. Guys, I think my... I think there's something wrong with my cobblestone generator. Dude, my basement has become like a labyrinth. It's become like a maze. See, if I want to get from my storage to my fission reactor, I have to go th here, then uh, go over here, then go over here, and then walk over here and click on this thing, and boom, we're in the fission reactor. That was like four steps. Hi, we take pride in our spacious, secure, and completely safe work environments. Uh, I'm, I just have to dodge like 30 different machines while walking around here. I don't even know what's going on anymore. I'm gonna make this iron and uranium automatically craft modularium, and for that we need a sequential fabricator, I believe. I don't know, I'll place it over here, I guess. I connected some item pipes to the sequential fabricator and now uranium redstone and iron should be automatically transported to it and crafted into modularium dust I then placed item pipes that extract the ready modularium dust from the crafter and transport it to this chest and then from the chest to the small compactor to be turned into small compact machine walls because the pipes are absolute garbage and they're only able to transport the items for like five blocks all right we have a bunch of obsidian probably not enough but I'll start making ender pearls anyway of course, they had to make this the sound effect you have to listen to every time you do this. And now, we have 26 ender pearls. This only took 38 years. Now we can start making normal compact machines. Okay, why did they have to make it so that this takes even longer than the ender pearls? And now, the final normal compact machine. Yay! Now we have to melt them. Another fun process. Well, it's actually not taking that long now that we have the upgrades. I think I waited like 30 minutes for four of these to get melted last time. Six large compact machines. All right, we need sewage to turn these into glitched machines. How do we get that much poop though? I guess we can make like a tree farm or something and then turn the saplings into pulped bio blend. I'm not sure how effective this is. I mean, we do get a lot of wood, but we need saplings, not wood. And I don't think we're getting a lot of those. Let's just put all of these in the sawmill. And we're getting pulped biomass and sawdust, which we can use for the infinite poop glitch. Infinite poop! Why is this a thing I have to do to progress? Alright, I'm just gonna connect my fission reactor to the pressure poop injector so we can inject some sewage into the large compact machines. You know, I titled my last video, Building the Pressure Poop Injector, which is kind of a questionable title, but <laughs> I couldn't keep myself, okay? And everyone who the video got recommended to was just really confused. What the fuck is this? Building the pressure poop injector in Minecraft. Really little. I can't. Ah, uh, this is the best thing I've ever seen. I swear I didn't make this post myself. Probably just someone trying to scrape the bottom of the barrel for views. Wow, okay then, I see how it is. And now, we can build this structure using the glitched machines. I swear if this takes like three hours to assemble. One giant compact machine. Yay! After once again grinding for hours, we now have a marginally larger room. All right, what's the next quest? We need six giant compact machines. To make this max sized compact machine, we need 144 normal compact machines, which means that we need a ton of machine walls and ender pearls. Also, apparently, there's now a way easier way of making compact machine walls. Not really sure how this results in a block that would otherwise require tons of uranium, but I'm not gonna question it. We also need ender pearls, so we need, um, Let's see, 3,744 obsidian. 
I guess I'll just AFK here while it generates. I swear, I probably have like 20 hours of footage where I'm just AFK. And we have enough obsidian. We're going to need like eight times as so much poop this time around. And I don't think the wood farm we used last time was very effective, so I'll instead make a weed farm, since weed can be also be used for making poop. I then started making the 144 ender pearls needed to make enough compact machines. The quest book actually proved to be useful for once, by suggesting I use a copy-paste gadget, which allows me to paste the needed structure and automatically take the resources from a storage container, instead of having to manually build the thing over and over. I think this is a way for the quest book to build false trust, only to once again absolutely scam me and leave me in shambles, in the near future, but despite this probably being true, I still couldn't say no to saving potential hours of time. And now, the last ender pearl. Uh, now we need to make 144 normal compact machines, which means that we'll have to do all that all over again. What makes it even better is that I'm pretty sure making each compact machine takes way longer than making an ender pearl. This is gonna be very fun. And now, the last machine. <sighs> Uh, 144 normal compact machines. No, there's no way. Did I just spend two fucking hours just doing that one thing? You know, sometimes I question which of my life choices have led to me sitting at my computer making compact machines in a basement for two hours straight. 30 large compact machines. Time to generate some more poop. My favorite activity. After injecting the large compact machines with sewage, we can now make five giant compact machines. Quality gameplay. Also, I was actually going to make six of them, but my 3am crack brain tried to calculate how many resources we need and just died. Okay, I don't know where I went wrong, but I'm just gonna sacrifice the giant compact machine that contains the wheat farm. And after some more intense sewage injecting, we can now make the final compact machine. I wouldn't be surprised if this takes like 30 minutes. At this point, the game is just adding unnecessary AFKing everywhere. Yay! I know it's two blocks wider, but I swear it just feels the exact same as before. With the larger space, we can now make a bigger miniaturization field, which now allows us to somehow turn wool into living organisms. This is how biology works. The chicken is supposed to be hollow for some reason, which took me like 15 minutes to figure out because it doesn't say that anywhere in the recipe. And now we have a chicken. Chicken. Give me eggs. Or ban. Egg. <gasps> Egg. Now we need to make a cow in a similar fashion. We need the cow because we need milk, which can somehow be used to make slime and emeralds. I don't even know anymore. To make the cow spawn egg, we once again need to build a massive shrine, but for that we need brown wool, which requires cocoa beans. So I once again planted a tree in these slightly malnourishing conditions and farmed some cocoa beans. And now we have a cow. Hi, cow. Give me your milk. At this point, the voices in my head started telling me that we needed to make a diamond pickaxe. Slight problem. We're in a basement, and there don't appear to be any diamonds here. But don't worry, you can now build this massive blender, and it will somehow turn your diamond nuggets into full diamonds. The problem is that we need glowstone for some of the parts of this machine, which is also known as the high impact compactor. And you know the fusion reactor we built earlier? Yeah, well, we actually need that for making the glowstone, because for some reason you need neutron fluid to make it. Now, the fusion reactor is supposed to generate energy, right? Well, f you! Because for some reason, you need to INPUT lots of power into the reactor to get it to start. But hold on, now, I don't mean to flex, but my fission reactor can generate around 2000 RF per tick. Surely that's enough to start the reactor. Nope, it needs a burst of 40 million RF. Also, each of the fusion reactor's electromagnets requires a constant 200 RF per tick. And since there's like 96 of them, we need another 19,200 RF per tick. Now, what's the first thing you think of doing when your fusion reactor isn't strong enough? That's right! Just build more fission reactors! So I upgraded my blast furnace and made the semi-automated assembly line that generates tons of tough alloy, made a ton of graphite and lead, gathered lots of lapis, and used these materials to craft several stacks of fission reactor components. Now we have this giant block. Ha <laughs> ha. Almost as big as your mom. Oh. But wait for it. I also made a second one. Each of these generates around 12,000 RF per tick, which should be enough to start the fusion reactor. The problem with having this much power is that the garbage flux ducts I used for transporting power most likely will spontaneously combust the instant I hooked them up to the reactors. Because of this, we need better cables. To make these upgraded cables, we need signalum and endarium, both of which 
are just slightly annoying to craft, but on the bright side, they at least don't require me to make more poop buckets. For the tier of flux duct I'm going for, we need enderium, which in turn requires platinum. And for whatever reason, to get platinum, we need to sit here and gradually collect microscopic pieces of it one at a time by saving gravel for 23 months. 36 resonant flux ducts. Yeah. Since we need the fusion reactor to generate neutron fluid, we need to choose a recipe that produces it. I just picked the one that looked the easiest and produced a good amount of power, so we need to fill both of the reactor's tanks with deuterium. We can get the deuterium by electrolyzing water. Now a normal person would probably automate the deuterium to make sure that the reactor can continue working and won't explode, but instead of doing that, I just made an obnoxiously slow deuterium generator and AFK'd while it filled a few portable tanks with the fluid. Listen, I don't feel like building a generator fast enough to support an entire fusion reactor, but Diffie, if, if that's the case, then wouldn't it make sense to look into other fluids that are easier to produce and still give you the desired results? Nah. Bro, I don't feel like reading. Besides, it's as they say, quantity over quality. Why care about safety regulations when you can just make a bunch of one fluid and shove it into the reactor all at once? I connected the fission reactor I made earlier to the electromagnets, and now they've turned green to indicate that they have enough power. Also, if they lose power at any point while the reactor is running, it's likely that random liquids will leak and p possibly lead to an explosion. So to make sure that the fission reactors never stop running, I gave them some random amount of fuel. I don't know how long it will last. Don't feel like checking. Listen, it'll be fine. What could possibly go wrong? Now with this in mind, I instantly connected the reactor itself to the same fission reactors as the magnets. Turns out this wasn't enough though, because we need to deliver the energy in a fast burst to sufficiently heat the reactor. Also, the electromagnets stopped working mid-process, and I felt like that might have been an issue. So instead, I pre-charged six energy cells and made them all simultaneously output their power into the reactor. The fusion reactor is up and running. Yay! And we're getting neutron fluid. Since we can now make glowstone, we can go back to making our long-awaited diamond pickaxe, for which we need the high-impact compactor. To build it, we need this long list of blocks. Alright, what do we need? 56 superconducting electromagnets? Wait, are these elite platings? Oh god, no. And each of them requires a constant 1000 RF? Yeah, we, we, we just need 56,000 RF per tick? <laughs> And now, we have the high impact compactor. Yay! Now we just need to somehow get more than 56,000 RF per tick. Some of you might suggest I use the fusion reactor since it generates close to that amount on its own. Nope, idiot. So I built another six replicas of the fusion reactor. I then made some diamond nuggets and threw them in the high impact compactor. Oh, it's working. Diamonds! I made some more diamond nuggets, and now we have three diamonds. And now, we can craft the diamond pickaxe. At last, we possess the almighty tool known as the diamond pickaxe. Now, comes the time you've all been waiting for. With this powerful instrument, we can now, finally... I don't know what I was expecting, to be honest. To break bedrock, we need to first create bedrock which can be done using bedrock chunks. Now at this stage, the game knows you're about to escape. So in the last attempt to stop you, it gives you a massive middle finger and forces you to go back to scraping the wall for several hours. And as if that wasn't enough, the bedrock chunks have like a 0.06% chance of actually dropping. Why? Oh, I'm starving. Have to eat some poop again. Wait. Oh, we already got one. Now we just need another 26 of these. Get me out of here. I'm coming for you. Don't think you're safe. I wouldn't be surprised if there's like 50 layers of bedrock here. Oh, the outside world! Prepare to combust. Die, biodiversity! Too much forest here for my taste. This took so long. How long have I played here for? Okay.
I've been in there for so long that I forgot what it feels like to be able to run for more than five blocks. Dude, I'm like actually hallucinating. Like if I look at the wall next to my monitor, everything is just like wavy. Why did I do this? Subscribe or I will put you in a three by three box.